Yo, what is going on Fantasy Addicts? I'm your host, That Fantasy Addict, and today we are going to be continuing our 10-team PPR mock draft series. We have completed 60% of the series, doing a mock draft from the first all the way to the sixth overall pick. Now we are going to do it from the seventh overall pick. With that being said, we are not going to waste any more time. We're all about efficiency here, so let's get right into the draft and see what team we can make here. And by the way, if you are not, are not aware of the platform that I'm using right now, it is called sleeper.app and it is my favorite place to do mock drafts. I am not sponsored by them by any means. I just like to do my mock drafts on sleeper.app. So with that being said, now it's our pick and Ezekiel Elliott fell to us. Now that is a bit out of the ordinary for sure. You know, normally he and Kamara are within the first five picks. So he has never really fallen outside of the top five or six in any of these mock drafts, but this time he did. And you guys shouldn't expect Zeke to be available in the mid to late first round, but it will happen in a few drafts if you are one of those guys who are in 10 or 12 drafts. Don't expect him to go in the top five in every single draft if you are in so many drafts. So if you've been a subscriber on here for a while and you've been watching all my videos, obviously this makes some sense. Zeke falling this late because he has never really fallen this late at all. So if you're a first time viewer, don't worry, this stuff normally doesn't happen. I'm not doing drafts on platforms where Zeke falls super, super late. You know, this is just something that happens every once in a while, which is what I like about sleeper.app. You know, they don't only have the CPU just taking people or players that right at their ADP. You know, I don't like that. I like the variety. I like the little bit of uncertainty with what's going to happen in each draft. So with that being said, Zeke is definitely the play here. I don't even think I need to explain that. I think all of you guys are pretty set on taking Zeke right here. Then Devontae Adams goes, followed by Tyreek Hill, Josh Jacobs, Nick Chubb, Miles Sanders, and Julio Jones. Now, it's very interesting with what is available at our pick. So if we take a look at running back, Joe Mixon is available, who normally goes ahead of Miles Sanders. I would say over 50% of the time, he is going ahead of Miles Sanders, but he fell to us. And I'm normally not in a position to take him, but he did fall to us. But with that being said, I don't think he is worth the pick. Now, Austin Eckler does not have as much potential, but he is so much safer in my opinion, so I would definitely take him instead. Then we have Chris Godwin and DeAndre Hopkins. So there's two ways that we can go here. We can go with Godwin, or we could go with Eckler, or Mixon, or Drake, but I would probably take Eckler here. Now, if you want to go with Joe Mixon, I would not fault you for that because I do understand that he has a lot of potential. He's one of the most talented backs in the league. It just all comes down to how this Bengals offense is going to be. And later into the offseason, we might find out how Joe, how Joe Burrow is looking and maybe get a little glimpse of how this team should be. Of course, reports aren't everything, but they do help a little bit. So if you want to go with Joe Mixon, can't fault you for that, but I'm going to go with Austin Eckler here just because he has a pretty good safety net. Then Kenyon Drake goes followed by Mixon, DeAndre Hopkins, Travis Kelsey, Lamar Jackson, Godwin, CEH, Gurley, Aaron Jones, Mahomes, Galladay, and Kittle gets taken one pick before ours. Really wish he fell to us there, but he already fell quite a bit going in the middle of the third round, so I can't complain much there. Then at wide receiver, we have Mike Evans, we have Thielen, some decent guys available for sure. No one good at tight end. Worth taking at running back here, there's Fournette, there's Carson, there's Le'Veon Bell, but I can wait on Carson and Le'Veon Bell until my next pick, so I'm kind of in a pickle here because there's no one who really, really stands out to me. So I haven't done much preparation for these third round wide receivers like Mike Evans, like Adam Thielen. I've done a lot of research into guys like Juju, like Calvin Ridley, like DJ Moore. I haven't done as much research as I would have liked to with guys like Evans and Thielen and Allen Robinson. So it's something that I'm going to be working on in the next few weeks because I really want to be prepared in case I'm in a situation like this. But with that being said, in my limited research, I do like Thielen. 
I think he's much safer. Don't get me wrong, Mike Evans has potential to be a top three or top five wide receiver, but at the same time, I could definitely see him not being a wide receiver one. And Adam Thielen, I think, is pretty safe to be a high-end wide receiver two and should definitely be a borderline wide receiver one with all the targets going to him at this point. You know, he should get 28, 29, 30% of the team's total targets. So we're going to take Adam Thielen here. I think he is in for so many targets this season. Then Mike Evans goes, followed by Fournette, James Conner, Le'Veon Bell, David Johnson, and Melvin Gordon. So if you have watched my videos for a while now, I think you already know who I'm taking here. Chris Carson, my man. He is an absolute beast. Pete Carroll loves him. Some people have said he's injury prone, which in a way is true, but at the same time, he's never really missed over two or three games in a season. So you can be pretty sure that he'll be out for one or two weeks, but there's nothing too concerning. Yes, they brought in Carlos Hyde, but it's because Rashad Penny tore his ACL late into the season, so he's not going to be ready until middle or late of the season, I think, and even when he returns, he's not going to be at 100%. Carlos Hyde is going to be the RB2 in this backfield, so don't even worry about Rashad Penny. Carlos Hyde is not a great running back, definitely not a pass catcher. He might get two or three touchdowns, but overall, touchdowns are the only thing that he'll take away from Chris Carson, but even then, Chris Carson should be in for seven, eight, nine rushing touchdowns, as well as two or three receiving touchdowns, probably, so we're going to take Chris Carson, love this guy. Then Juju goes, followed by Amari Cooper, Allen Robinson, OBJ, Cooper Cup, Mark Andrews, DJ Moore, Robert Woods, David Montgomery, Ridley, A.J. Brown, and Mark Ingram. So looking at the running backs available, there's a good bunch of guys who I like, such as Akers and Hunt and Geis, all those guys, but I can wait one round, maybe even two rounds, to get one or two of those guys, so we don't need to take any of them here, plus we already have three running backs who I really, really like. At wide receiver, we have Metcalf, we have Chark, we have McLaurin. McLaurin is really, really close to Metcalf. And in fact, right now I have McLaurin ranked ahead of Metcalf. But if I take Metcalf, there is a chance that McLaurin is available with my next pick. Now, if I did not already have Adam Thielen, I would probably just say, you know what? I want the best player available. I don't want to take any risks. And I would just go ahead and take McLaurin. But since I already have Adam Thielen, I'm thinking maybe I go with the risk, go with DK Metcalf, just hoping that McLaurin falls to me. And if he doesn't, it's not the end of the world. There are other receivers who I like. So quick look at tight end, Zach Gertz, no, not going to take him. So yeah, we're going to go with Metcalf here. Really, really hope that McLaurin falls to me. And actually, we'll take one quick look at players after McLaurin, and yeah, no one worth it. So we're going to be very risky and go with Metcalf. And if you wanted to go with Shark, I would not fault you for that either. So then we see Jonathan Taylor go, followed by Singletary, Tyler Lockett, DJ Shark, Kyler, and Zach Ertz. So luckily, our risk paid off. We got McLaurin. Absolutely love him. He looked like possibly a top five wide receiver last season, just in terms of skill and definitely top 10. This year, he's probably going to look like a top five wide receiver It's just this offense is the only thing holding him back. But he has chemistry with Dwayne Haskins. They played together at Ohio State. And Haskins should take a leap forward this season. Probably not going to be great, but he should be better. And McLaurin is going to get such a good workload. And he is just a beast. He can make anything happen from nothing. So very, very happy and excited to have McLaurin on my team. Then Cam Akers goes, followed by Keenan Allen, Deshaun Watson, Darren Waller, Cortland Sutton, Russell Wilson, Kareem Hunt, Stephon Diggs, Gronk, Raheem Mostert, Dak Prescott, and we are now up on the clock once again. So for receivers, there's no one who I like right here. Love guys in the range of Gallup and Tyler Boyd, even Debo Samuel, Marvin Jones, all those guys I really like, but we can definitely wait one round and we can probably wait two rounds to get at least one of them, if not two. 
Then at running back, we have also a bunch of guys who I really, really like. This includes Ronald Jones, James White, Darius Geis, J.K. Dobbins, and Tevin Coleman. Now, I can wait one round to get one of them for sure, but maybe I want two of these guys. So we might just take one here and one with our next pick. Now at quarterback, Drew Brees, Matt Ryan, Rodgers, Tom Brady, all these guys I really like, but I can wait a round or two. And then at tight end, no one who I like there. So we're kind of in a weird situation because there's no one who is about to go off the board that I like. I can wait for anyone. So if I could trade my draft pick right now, I probably would, but we can't. So we're just going to go with it. So at running back, we have three great running backs. So what I want to do is take a more risky running back. And I love Ronald Jones, but it seems like I've been taking him not so much just because Darius Geis is always available. But this time, we're going to go with Ronald Jones. Ronald Jones is safer than Geis, in my opinion, but has a little less upside. Ronald Jones should stay on the field. You know, there's no injury concerns, really. But we're just a little less sure of his talent than we are of Darius Geis's. Then we see Drew Brees go, followed by DeAndre Swift, Damian Williams, Hollywood Brown, Devontae Parker, and then James White. So three guys, Geis, Dobbins, Tevin Coleman, love all of them. At wide receiver, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to wait until the next round for Michael Gallup and Tyler Boyd, probably. We probably won't be able to wait, but one of them could be there, but we should definitely get Marvin Jones, so I'm willing to wait on them a little bit and just hope that I can get one of them and just load up on running backs here. So we're going to go with Geis here. If you want to take Tevin Coleman... I think that's completely fine. I just think he has the same upside as Geis has, but so much more risk. Because Geis, if he stays on the field, he's an RB2, no doubt about it. Tevin Coleman, on the other hand, if Raheem Mostert doesn't get traded, I don't see how Tevin Coleman is that startable, you know? And even if Mostert does get traded, Coleman might not be that great if they take in Devontae Freeman or someone else. So... I like Tevin Coleman here, but I like Geis more, and I don't see how you can make the argument for Coleman ahead of Geis. Then Tyler Boyd goes, followed by Michael Gallup, J.K. Dobbins, A.J. Green, Jarvis Landry, Edelman, Brandon Cooks, Jordan Howard, Marlon Mack, Debo Samuel, Hayden Hurst, and Keyshawn Vaughn. I love how right after I took Darius Geis, Boyd and Gallup went right there just to take away any hope that I ever could have had of them being available with my next pick. But something interesting happened, and that is Tevin Coleman being available with this pick. I might have to consider taking him. At wide receiver, Marvin Jones, CeeDee Lamb. I like CeeDee Lamb, but Marvin Jones is, without a doubt, the top guy here. I love Tevin Coleman, but Marvin Jones is my top priority here. Now, I could risk it and take Tevin Coleman, and... One of these days, I might do a video like that where I just take every running back I possibly can until like the 10th or 11th round. We'll see if I do that one of these days. But it's just too much risk to take my, what would it be at this point? We have two, three, four, five running backs. So it'd be, it'd be too risky to take my sixth running back before my fourth wide receiver when I like our running backs a lot more than our wide receivers. So for that reason, we are going to go with Marvin Jones. I would like Tevin Coleman, but we just can't get everything we want, you know? Sometimes you just have to compromise, and you got to just play it safe a little every once in a while. Then Will Fuller goes, followed by Evan Ingram, Tevin Coleman, Deontay Johnson, Sony Michelle, and Alexander Madison. So I see that CeeDee Lamb is available, and Slayton is as well, but there's guys later like Crowder, like Ruggs, like Rieger, like Nikhil Harry, and those guys are completely fine. At running back, I do think Matt Breda is a good pick, but looking at quarterback, we still have plenty of options, actually. I am fine with Ryan, Rodgers, Brady, Allen, Wentz, and Stafford, and Daniel Jones and Big Ben are not bad either, but I definitely have them a tier lower than Stafford, Wentz, Allen, Brady, Rodgers, and Ryan, but I can... I think I can wait at least one more round, if not two, 
before I take one of those guys, so we're not going to take them yet. Now, at tight end, Tyler Higby's available. That's very, very interesting. So it's between him and Matt Breida, but since I already have five running backs, I think I'll take Tyler Higby, play it safe. You know, I love Tyler Higby. He's so talented. They're going to use a lot of two tight end sets, so there's no worries about Gerald Everett taking a ton of targets away from him. Higby's going to have his opportunities, and he looked great. And now Todd Gurley's gone, and Brandon Cooks is gone. So there's so many more targets to go around in this offense this season. Then Latavius Murray goes, followed by Matt Ryan, C.D. Lamb, Tariq Cohen, San Francisco defense, Aaron Rodgers, Matt Breda, Tom Brady, Carson Wentz, Hunter Henry, Philip Lindsay, and Chase Edmonds. So at wide receiver, we still have those guys who I talked about earlier. At running back, Antonio Gibson is not a bad play at all. But quarterback, there's only two guys, Josh Allen and Matt Stafford left. So we're going to go with one of them. And you could go either way here, but I'm going to go Josh Allen because I've been taking a lot of Matt Stafford shares recently. So we're going to switch it up, go with Josh Allen. Plus, I do have Josh Allen higher in my rankings. I know I keep saying Matt Stafford, we don't need to be worried about his injury because it shouldn't affect him. But at the end of the day, I'm not like ruling out the possibility of getting re-injured. You know, I always say, there's a minimal chance because that's what all the medical experts are saying. It's not something that you should worry about. But if you have one player, Josh Allen, who doesn't have many injury concerns, and then Stafford, who has a minor injury concern, why even take the minor injury concern, you know? So for that reason, we're going to go with Josh Allen, a lot of rushing upside, some decent passing upside, especially with the likes of Stephon Diggs in this offense now. Josh Allen loves to throw deep, but wasn't so good at it last season. Stephon Diggs is one of the best deep threats in the league, so I'm happy to have Josh Allen here. Then Emmanuel Sanders goes, followed by Jerry Judy, Buffalo defense, Darius Slayton, Henry Ruggs, and McCall Hardman. So we have Antonio Gibson still available. We have Crowder and Rieger. And then at tight end, there's no one who I really think is worth it. We have two bench spots, so one of them will go to a tight end. And the other one we have to decide if we want our sixth running back or our fifth wide receiver and I don't really have a preference here except I'd probably actually rather have our sixth running back or we could go with a backup quarterback in Matt Stafford you know if I took Stafford maybe I would consider taking Josh Allen as a backup just because of that minor injury risk that Stafford has but Josh Allen there's not many risks there so I think we'll just go with Antonio Gibson here I love Antonio Gibson when you pair him with Darius Geis because even when they're both playing, they could both be in your lineup and, you know, Darius Geis could get you 10 points and Gibson could get you eight points. So you can start them together, but if one of them goes down, which is definitely possible considering Darius Geis' injury history, then Antonio Gibson is huge and Likewise, if Gibson goes down, Darius Geis is huge. So they're both startable together, but if one goes down, the other one is an RB2, if not an RB1, without a doubt. So we're going to go with Antonio Gibson. He's not even a handcuff. He just has standalone value. But if Geis goes down, or if he goes down, the other one is worth a ton. Then Jared Cook goes, followed by Zach Moss, Carrion Johnson, Henderson, Tony Pollard, Crowder, Baltimore defense, Duke Johnson, Kirk Cousins, Matt Stafford, Cam Newton, and Jalen Rieger. So all we have is a defense, a kicker, and a backup tight end. And first thing I see is Noah Fant is available. But since Higby is a little risky, I don't want to take Noah Fant as our backup because he's risky as well. I'd rather wait for Jacecki or especially Dallas Goddard. So we'll use this to our advantage by taking a tight end, excuse me, by taking a defense and getting that edge there. I see Pittsburgh defense and I see New England defense. It's very tough and a lot of people would take Pittsburgh defense. And even though they have so many great pieces on that defense, like TJ Watt, like Devin Bush, like Minka Fitzpatrick, ton of great players. But at the end of the day, they are in a tougher division and they have a fast paced offense. So there could be quite a few shootouts. The Patriots have a great defense on paper as well, but they're in what should be an easier division, although they might be a tougher division. Depends how 
the Jets and the Dolphins do, and the Bills, of course. But also, the Patriots have a much slower-paced offense, so we'll take New England defense here. But if you want to take Pittsburgh defense, no one can really blame you for that, because they are very good. So then Baker Mayfield goes, followed by Noah Fant, Jimmy G, Austin Hooper, Pittsburgh defense, and Chargers defense. So looking at tight end, Dallas Goddard is so far down there, so I honestly, I think we can wait. What kickers are available? Okay, so Justin Tucker and Buck Kerr and Lutz and all those guys are available, so we'll use this to our advantage and get a great kicker. And, you know, right now, I have Tucker as my top-ranked kicker. If you want to go with Zerline, Lutz, Buck Kerr, or Tucker, I don't think anyone could really blame you. They're all in the same tier, at least in my rankings. But I have Tucker up there because he's done it the best for the longest, and in any offense, he has just been so good. So we'll take Tucker there. Then Chicago defense goes, followed by Will Lutz, Tampa Bay defense, Seattle defense, Harrison Butker, Greg Zerline, Joshua Kelly, Justin Jefferson, Young Hoku, Zane Gonzalez, Minnesota defense, Dan Bailey, and now it's time for our pick. And Dallas Goddard is available. I love him because he's very safe. You know he'll get you 8 to 12 points on pretty much any given week. But if Zach Ertz goes down, Dallas Goddard is a top 5 tight end. So if Higby were to bust, we have a safe option in Goddard. And when Higby's on a bye and if he goes down, Dallas Goddard is always a decent option to put in. But he can always go off if Zach Ertz goes down without a doubt. So Dallas Goddard is our player here, and I love him. Then Robbie Gould goes, followed by Jake Elliott, and Fairbairn is the Mr. Irrelevant. I know you're about to click off of this video, but wait, because the most important part of the video is coming right now. We have to do a quick recap and review our team and give our team a draft grade. Only going to take two, three minutes. Only going to take two or three minutes, so make sure to stick around. So to start the recap, we have Josh Allen as our quarterback. Pretty solid. Nothing to complain about there. Love him. Then Zeke and Eckler. Very, very good running back duo. Very difficult to get a better one. Then we have Adam Thielen and DK Metcalf. I don't mind Metcalf as our wide receiver two or Thielen as our wide receiver one, but it doesn't really stick out to me at all. Then Tyler Higby is our tight end one, who is by no means bad, but it's not like he's Travis Kelsey or George Kittle. Then Chris Carson at our flex is definitely phenomenal. Love that. I always love when he's my flex. Then we have McLaurin and Marvin Jones as our backup wide receivers. I'm glad we have two really good backup wide receivers, but our starting wide receivers are just nothing too special in my opinion. Then we also have Ronald Jones, Darius Geis, and Antonio Gibson. So I think that is very, very strong. I love our running back core and our bench running backs for sure. We also have Dallas Goddard as our backup tight end. So overall, I like our quarterback. I love our running backs. Our tight ends are good. And our wide receivers aren't awful. But overall, I just think that there's nothing like incredibly special about this team. Yes, Zeke Eckler and Chris Carson's very good, but I've had Zeke Eckler and Carson or something similar to that with better wide receivers or with the better tight end. You know, I've had like really, really good running backs with Mark Andrews or even George Kittle, or I had Calvin Ridley as my wide receiver too one or two times. So. I love this bench. This might be the best bench I've ever had. This is an A-plus bench, no doubt about it. But the starting lineup, especially for a 10-team draft, I would have to give it a B-. And I'm tempted to give it a better grade because Chris Carson as your flex is phenomenal. But at the end of the day, that happens to me so much, and I have much better wide receivers and tight ends in many of those drafts so I just don't think that anything is super, super special about this team. And for that reason, this starting lineup is a B-. minus. So what would I give this team? I would give this team in between a B and a B+, plus, probably even closer to a B. So 
this is probably the worst draft that I have done on this YouTube channel. Don't get me wrong, it's not bad. And if DK Metcalf or McLaurin or Marvin Jones finishes as a borderline wide receiver one, which could definitely happen, then I think that this team is great. But if that doesn't happen, and if Higby busts, which could definitely happen, then this team is not that great at all. So this team is in between a B and a B plus, but closer to a B. I really hope you guys enjoy this video. If you're still here, let me know in the comments below what you would grade this team. So I gave it in between a B and a B plus, but let me know what you would grade it. Do you agree with me or would you give it something else? I'm really curious to find out and I respond to all comments. So make sure to let me know what you would grade this team because I'm going to make sure that I reply to your comment. And if you enjoyed the video, please make sure to hit that thumbs up button because it helps me out so much. It helps me get these videos out to other people and helps them win their fantasy league as well. And I really appreciate when I see that all you guys are clicking the thumbs up button. It means so much to me. And if you guys are new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to see my fantasy football content that I put out almost every single day. I have between five to seven videos every single week and I don't want you guys to miss out on that. I really, really hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Peace.